Let's fill out a 2024 presidential map based on the latest polling averages in every state, and then compare it to the same map I made in January to see if there are any noticeable changes in the all-important race to 270 electoral votes. We'll start by giving Joe Biden all of the states he is sure to win. Those include Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii, Colorado, Illinois, New York, Maine's 1st Congressional District, Vermont, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C., Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. And for the states that Donald Trump will definitely win, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska at large, as well as the 1st and 3rd Congressional Districts, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and South Carolina. Each of these states went to Biden, or Trump, by margins greater than 10% in 2020, and we have no reason at this point to believe that any of these states won't back the same candidate by a comfortable margin once again here in 2024. With these states allocated, Democrats have an 191 to 122 electoral college vote advantage. Now we also have several states that definitively lean in one direction, but are likely to be decided by single-digit margins in the 2024 race. They are states that could become competitive if one candidate were to win in a landslide, but otherwise have a very good chance of backing a given candidate in the election based on a more comprehensive analysis of the state of play in that state including factors such as prediction markets, shifts and trends, demographic favorability, other forecaster ratings, and various other data points. In other words, while safe or solid states may be defined as one party has a clear edge and the race is not competitive, these likely states are those where one party has an edge, but an upset is possible. For the purposes of this video, the likely states, those in the second darkest shade, are those where the polling margin is between 7 to 12%, while lean states, the second lightest shade, are between 2 to 7%. Tilt states, which we'll get to at the very end of the video, the lightest color, are 0 to 2%. Starting in Alaska, the last frontier state, has backed Republicans in every election since 1964, but Trump's 10-point margin of victory in 2020 was the lowest for a Republican in more than three decades, and Alaska shocked the nation in 2022 when it elected its first Democratic U.S. representative since 1973. Per Race to the White House's polling average in Alaska, Trump leads Biden by 9.8%, based on two polls surveying the race so far. We will be using the Decision Desk HQ slash The Hill polling average where available, but they have only created averages in states where at least five polls have been taken, so Alaska's likely Republican rating is based on the Race to the White House average instead. Meanwhile, in New Mexico, Biden won by a 10.8 point margin in 2020, and he currently leads by an average of 7.8% in the three polls recorded here via race to the White House. New Mexico should end up comfortably in the Biden column once all is said and done, it goes down as likely blue. But as is the case with Biden in Alaska, there is an outside chance of Trump making some noise here. Both Iowa and Ohio are on very similar trajectories, having voted for Trump by margins between 8 to 9 points in both 2016 and 2020, after having previously been part of the Obama coalition in 08 and 2012. DDHQ does have polling averages in both of these states. Trump leads Biden by 11.3% in Ohio, based on 7 polls. He is led by at least 11 points in 3 straight surveys here. And then, in Iowa, Trump leads by 10.9%, also based on seven polls. Those are eerily similar numbers, and I think it's fair to say that Trump is once again a heavy favorite to carry Iowa's six electoral votes, and Ohio's 17 electoral votes in 2024. They join Alaska in the likely Republican rating category.
Up in Minnesota, polling has Biden ahead by 3.1 percent, according to Race to the White House. Minnesota actually holds the current record for longest streak of voting Democratic of any state in the entire country. It has not voted for a Republican presidential candidate since Richard Nixon in 1972. That being said, it has been decided by single-digit margins in eight of those 12 elections, including each of the last three, as Hillary Clinton defeated Trump by 1.5 points in 2016 and Biden won by 7.5 points in 2020. The current polling average here in Minnesota does mean that it leans towards Biden in 2024. 3.1% is by no means a comfortable margin, though I do fully expect Biden to win Minnesota in November. If he doesn't, it would probably mean that he lost the national popular vote by a sizable margin, and Trump would have already won most of the other competitive battlegrounds on this map as well. Over in New Hampshire in the Northeast, it backed Biden by a very similar margin to Minnesota at 7.4% in 2020, and has not voted Republican since 2004. It has consistently been the most competitive state in the region over the last few election cycles, though, and as of the latest polling average from DDHQ slash The Hill, Biden's lead is 6.2%, based on eight polls. That is just below the cutoff to label New Hampshire as a likely Biden state. Instead, it'll join Minnesota in the lean column. Filling out the Northeast, Maine has consistently voted Democrat in eight straight presidential races, but like Minnesota, it is often decided by a less than comfortable margin. The latest polling average here from Race to the White House actually has Biden in front by just 1.1%, well within the margin of error. Though there is a big asterisk here, as this average is only based on two polls, the first being from Emerson College, which is Biden in front by 11 points, but since that was taken in September of 2022, it obviously does not hold much weight. Rather, the latest poll from D-rated pollster Digital Research had Biden in front by just 1%. Maine does consistently vote to the left of New Hampshire and Minnesota, though, so while it does go in the tilt Democrat territory based on this polling average, I'm not expecting its blue streak to end in 2024. The second district, on the other hand, has now backed Trump in back-to-back -back elections by 10 points in 2020 and 6 points in 2016, and should again in 2024, the only poll surveying this race has Trump ahead of Biden by 14%, so it will go down as safe Republican on this polling-based map. Down in Virginia now, a formerly reliably Republican state throughout the 20th century, now a firmly Democratic-leaning state, Biden carried Virginia's 13 electoral votes by 11 points in 2020, and outside of Glenn Youngkin's victory in the 2021 gubernatorial election here, Democrats have won every major statewide election here in the Commonwealth since 2009. The latest polling average from DDHQ has Biden ahead by 4.1% in Virginia, based on 10 polls included in the average. Biden has led or been tied with Trump in every single one of these polls, so the state will lean Democrat on the map. That leaves Florida and Texas now as the final two states with a high degree of lean towards either candidate based on a wider range of factors, such as recent results and the aforementioned factors like trends, demographics, prediction markets, and so on. DDHQ does not yet have an average for the race in Texas, so looking at race to the White House instead, Trump leads by 7 points based on 11 polls surveyed in the Lone Star State. That places Texas just barely above the cutoff line inside of the likely Republican column. Trump's 5.5-point victory in 2020 was the narrowest for Republicans since 1996, and Texas has trended more than 10 points towards Democrats since 2012 relative to the rest of the country. Florida, on the other hand, is on a completely opposite trajectory, as Trump won in 2020 by 3.4%, making it one of just eight states where he actually did better than in 2016. The 2022 midterms also saw a localized red wave in Florida as incumbent Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio, both Republicans, were re-elected by 19 and 16 points, landslides by Florida standards. The Sunshine State's strong rightward trend in recent elections has also translated over to polls for 2024 as well, where Trump leads Biden by an average of 9.1% according to a weighted average of eight polls from DDHQ and The Hill. 
that means that Florida goes down as likely Republican as well. Now we're down to these seven states that will really decide the 2024 presidential race. We'll start in North Carolina, where we have an average from DDHQ based on 14 polls, weighted of course by recency, and Trump leads by an average of 7.9%. The former president has led in 12 straight polls in the Tar Heel state. It goes down as likely Republican on this electoral map. North Carolina has voted Republican by less than four points in each of the last three presidential elections. And while the Biden campaign will surely actively look to flip the state this November, I fully expect Democrats to fall short once again, as that kind of seems to be the trend here with the Republicans also winning four straight U.S. Senate races in North Carolina by less than six points as well. In Georgia, recent polling has been even worse for Biden in the Peach State, as Trump leads in this critical battleground by 8.3%, based on an average of 18 polls tracked here in DDHQ's average. Biden has not led in a single poll since June of last year in Georgia, while Trump has led by at least five points in four straight. It'll join North Carolina in the likely Republican column on the map, becoming the very first flip on this map, as Biden did win Georgia, albeit narrowly, by 0.2% in 2020. Georgia is a state that is modeling the two primary demographics that the Democratic Party is trying to form its coalition around, black voters and college-educated suburbs. So Biden's dismal numbers here do carry an extra level of concern for the DNC, as their breakthrough in this traditionally conservative state had opened up a wider range of possibilities for their electoral prospects in the future. Now you guys know I love to compare and contrast on this channel, and the state of Nevada is the perfect state to go after Georgia for that reason, as Republicans have been eyeing it as a flip in the all-things-go state for about a decade due to its demographic favorability for the party, an ever-present Hispanic population that has shown signs of softening in support for Democrats, as well as a growing working class that has played a role in Nevada's slow trend towards Republicans in recent years. Again, Trump is polling extraordinarily well in Nevada, leading Biden by 5.6% based on a 16-poll average. He has led in six straight surveys, all coming from well-regarded pollsters, such as Emerson College, Morning Consult, and Siena College. So his lead here is about as concrete as it gets right now in terms of legitimacy. That, of course, means that Nevada will lean Republican, falling in that R plus 2 to R plus 7 range. And if you have not already understood why Democratic strategists are hammering the panic button about Biden's candidacy, I'm sure you're starting to now. Donald Trump has 257 electoral votes to his name. He is just 13 shy of 270 with 55 electoral votes from the four states remaining. On that note, let's proceed to Arizona, where once again, DDHQ's latest polling average shows Biden losing in a state that he won in 2020. Trump is leading the incumbent president by 4.6%, based on 23 polls surveying Arizona's presidential race. Trump has held at least a three-point lead in the last seven surveys taken here. It's another dismal data point for the Biden re-elect. Arizona leans Trump on the map as well. Meaning that if these polling averages hold true across the Sun Belt region, Biden would need to hold each of the states in the traditional blue wall, comprising Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Before we dive into the Upper Rust Belt trio, though, let's discuss Nebraska's second congressional district, where we unfortunately do not yet have any polls. Nebraska and Maine split their electoral votes, awarding two to the statewide winner, and one per congressional district. While Nebraska as a state is solidly Republican, its Omaha-based 2nd District is much more urban and college-educated than the rest of the state, which does favor Democrats. And Biden won it by 6.5 points in 2020. It was redistricted following the 2020 census to be a few points more favorable to Republicans within the new district lines, and it has been represented by a Republican in Congress since 2017. But Biden is still favored to win here according to nearly every major forecaster, so I'll put it down as leaning Democrat for now. Alrighty, now for the infamous Rust Belt trio of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. 
It strikes again. They each backed Trump in 2016 by less than a point, and then Biden in 2020 by less than three points. In both cases, they proved decisive. Had Hillary Clinton won these three in 2016, she would have been elected president. And had Trump won them in 2020, he would be serving a second term right now. Unsurprisingly, given what we've seen so far, Joe Biden is currently trailing Trump in all three states. What does come as a shock, though, to me at least, is that Trump's margin of lead is lowest in Wisconsin right now. He leads Biden by just 1.7%, based on 14 polls, in DDHQ's average. That is a tilt Republican margin, and I say that it comes as a shock to me because Wisconsin has voted to the right of Michigan and Pennsylvania in the last few presidential elections. And demographically speaking, it is both whiter and less college-educated than the other two, which should favor the GOP's targeted coalition. That being said, abortion rights have been a more pressing issue in Wisconsin since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade than in most other states, with a high-profile state Supreme Court race and gubernatorial election in 2022 revolving around that issue going Democrats' way. Looking at Michigan now, Trump leads by 3.5 points based on 22 polls according to DDHQ. That's remarkably bad for Biden given that he won Michigan by nearly three points in 2020, his largest margin in any of these six key battlegrounds in that election. And Democrats have had a string of strong performances up and down the ballot since then as well. Nevertheless, Michigan leans Republican as a result of that polling average. And finally, let's look at Pennsylvania, the keystone state in name and practice perhaps the most important state in the 2024 election for both candidates. If there's one state where the polling average could tell you the most about the state of the race nationally, it's here. It took a while, but DDHQ finally has an average for Pennsylvania. Trump leads by exactly three points, based on 26 polls. Biden had previously held a narrow lead in three of the last four polls taken before a Chisholm Strategies poll came out showing Trump with an eight-point advantage heavily shifting the average in his favor. This means that Pennsylvania joins Michigan in the lean Republican column, giving Trump a grand total of 312 electoral votes, to Joe Biden's 226. Trump has won back each of the states Biden flipped in 2020 on this map, and has added Nevada into his winning coalition. Comparing this map to my video from back in January, where I also filled out a map based on polling averages at that point, Biden was previously leading in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. They both tilted Democrat on that map, with Trump winning the Electoral College race in that video by a margin of 283 to 255. Clearly, Trump is only getting stronger in the polls, a worrying sign for Biden as the two candidates are now starting to look past their respective primaries and focus in on each other as general election opponents. I will be sure to update this map once again sometime in March, but until then, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all of my other 2024 presidential election analysis videos. That does it though for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this map, as well as any other videos you would like to see in the future. Shout out to my channel members on screen here. Thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, go ahead and click the join button below this video to receive exclusive perks. Make sure also to subscribe to my channel down below, and please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out electionpredictionsofficial.com for my 2024 presidential election forecast as well. You can check out more content from my channel here, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. EP out.